Hey guys, it's Greg from BitGoblin again, and today we're going to take a look at how to set up and use Unraid. It's an operating system that is built for NASes and is actually rather easy to use. And it's also pretty cool and does a bunch of neat things, so stick around and see what it's all about. You smell that? It smells like a BitGoblin. If you've been considering building a NAS for, you know, storing stuff on your home network or for your business, then you've probably already started looking at about what kind of hardware you need to put in it, the amount of storage you need, and possibly even how to connect to it over your network. But arguably the most important thing is you also need to consider what OS you want, since that'll be how you interface with your hardware to set up your array, shares, and possibly even run some other networked services on it through your virtual machines or containers. In other words, the OS is very important. In case you haven't heard of Unraid before, it is a NAS operating system, like I mentioned earlier, developed by LimeTech, designed to be easy to use and easy to expand your storage. More on that later. The main driving forces behind it are making it easy and simple enough to experience so that anyone can use it themselves without needing an IT friend, like myself, to manage it for them, and flexible enough so you don't have to go all out and plan way ahead into the future to build your proper system. And you can instead piece together your array as you go and add drives as you can afford them to the system. There are plenty of reasons why you might want to build a NAS, but I'm not going to get into them here since I've already discussed this before. And if you want to see that, go click at the link in the upper right corner and check out that video. Anyways, that's enough talking. Let's start looking at ins actually installing Unraid. One thing to note before we start is that Unraid is designed to be run and installed on a USB drive, not a typical SSD or hard drive. I believe it can be done if you really want to do that, but I'm not going to be that guy that's going to push you all into doing something that isn't officially supported. So don't do that, just, just don't. So the first thing you need to do is create a bootable USB drive. And this is actually rather different from most operating systems. Instead of using a program like Rufus or Etcher to write an ISO image to your flash drive, Unraid has this neat little utility that you can run on Windows or Mac OS called their USB creator tool. What you need to do is go to unraid.net slash download. On the right side of the page, download the USB creator for Windows or Mac OS, depending on what your system is. And after it's downloaded, simply run it, accept the user access control prompt if it appears, and you'll get this window. At this point, you should be able to leave all the options alone as it should default to the stable branch, latest version of said stable branch, and it should also auto detect your flash drive. You can adjust these options here if you want, but I'm going to run with this as it is. Click the right button in the prompt that comes up, click erase and wipe. And after a short wait, it'll be done and you can close the window. Next up, you just need to plug your USB drive into your NAS and simply turn it on. If you have another bootable drive connected to your system, like a Windows or Linux install drive, you'll need to reconfigure your BIOS settings to make sure your USB drive is the first priority to boot from. There's also a boot option for Unraid to start with a GUI, which will load a lightweight desktop environment with a browser and do all this for you but I'd recommend just booting up the headless mode by default and grabbing your laptop or even your phone or tablet, sitting down on the couch and just going to town. Most people don't really have a display of some sort dedicated to their NAS anyway, since it wastes resources. So it may be worth considering running it headless and getting comfortable with that setup. All right, awesome. Now that Unraid is booted, let's go ahead and open up a browser. I have Firefox open here. And in the address bar, let's just put, type in HTTP colon slash slash tower. There we go. Got the Unraid registration page. Here we can purchase a actual license key for Unraid, but they also allow you to have a 30 day free trial, which I'm going to go with here. So let's go ahead and get trial key. Accept the EULA. Start trial. Trial started. Awesome. Cool. So first thing that comes up is the array devices page. Now, right now I only have two devices connected to this machine. Well, one hard drive and one SSD. Normally what you would want to do is select your disks, say you have like a bunch of, you know, one terabyte hard drives, then come up here to parity and select one or two of your hard drives to be the parity disks. Basically, these will be the disks that kind of help you fail over and recover your array if a disk or two fails. This is very important to set, and I believe this can be changed later. It'll just take some time for the array to rebuild. But for now, we're just going to go with no parity drives because I don't have any connected to the system. All right, so now that you have your drives assigned, hopefully here you have some parity disks, but again, don't have any for now. Scroll down the page a little bit. You'll see under here, you have this little pull devices section. This is where you add your cache drives. So let's go ahead and click add pool. I only have one cache drive, and let's just leave it named as cache to be clear. Click add. 
Then down here under pool devices next to cache, I'm going to assign the Kingston 120 gigabyte SSD to that pool. All right, cool. That's all we need to do for the array. Let's go ahead and click start. And boom, you have your, you have your Unraid array working. All right, so the first thing I noticed here is that both our cache disk and our actual main array disk are noted as unmountable, unsupported partition layout. This just means that it, they're not properly formatted for Unraid. So what we need to do is come down here to where it says unmountable disks present, blah, blah, blah. The format button is grayed out. We have to check this little checkbox of yes, I want to do this, and then click OK to acknowledge that you're going to format and wipe the disks entirely before setting them up for Unraid. So let's go ahead and click Format. And again, like that prompt said, this is very dangerous. So if you want the drives to be usable for something else, or they already have data on them, then don't do this. So the formatting has started. Shouldn't take too long, but I'll check back when that's done. Disks are properly showing up now. They're actually mounted, and they're currently being used. All right, now that we're done setting up the main array, let's go ahead and start setting up some, some shares like you would actually use an NAS for. So click on the shares tab. You have some default shares here. You can probably get rid of these. We're just gonna ignore them for now. Let's go ahead and click on add share. All right, so for the share name, let's just call it random comments. Let's just call it random stuff stored on, if I can type properly, the NAS, use cache pool. Let's just say cache prefer. There are four different options here for using the cache. No, yes, prefer, and only. I'm going to stick with prefer for this one, which is the recommended one, I believe. I'll leave a link to the different types of caches and what they do in the, in the video description below if you're curious of what they do. Cache pool, we're just going to leave it as cache. That's the only cache we have. Enable copy on right, leave it at audio. Auto, wow. Going to leave included disks all and excluded disks none. So let's go ahead and just click add share. Cool. So our random file share is set up. Now to log into it, let's go to users tab and set this up. Now you're not gonna be logging in as the root user, but let's go ahead and while we're here and change the root user password, because by default there is no root password. Let's just call this super strong password. Now that the root password is set, as you see it logged us out, out of the web UI, but the root user is what is used to log into the web UI and actually manage the NAS. As far as I'm aware, you cannot set other users to be, to be able to log into the web UI. Only the root user does. But yeah, so let's go ahead and do root super strong password. Log in. Now we're back to the web UI. So anyways, let's go back to the users tab. Click add user. Let's just call this my user description. My user. Type in a password for it. Just call it password. Now this user that I created my user is what you use to log into your NAS when you're actually setting up your shares. Go away, Bitwarden, I don't want you. So let's just say we opened up Windows File Explorer and we're gonna go add the file share to our system. What we do is right click on this PC, map network drive, set a drive letter if you want to, slash slash tower, slash, what did I call it, random. Reconnected sign in. I'm gonna uncheck this, but you'll wanna check this if you want it to automatically log into the share when you sign into your account and connect using different credentials. So here, this is the user that we set up, my user and password. And you just connect. Apparently that didn't work. All right, cool. Now, if you type in the right password, then your share will actually be mounted. As you see here down under my disks, you have the random share under tower. You can start creating folders, my new folder, whatever else. You know, create text documents, and then you can access them on any other machine that you set up to connect to this NAS. Pretty easy, right? So now that we've gone through how to set up Unraid, let's just talk about why you'd want to use Unraid over another operating system for NAS is like FreeNAS, Open Media Vault, or just a plain old Windows or Linux operating system. First off, Unraid is actually really easy to set up. As you saw, it really didn't take too long. It kind of walked us through actually setting up the array, putting all the drives in, all that kind of fun stuff. And once you're done, all you had to do was create the share, create your user, and you're off and running. And even creating the bitable USB for Unraid was actually rather easy. They gave us a tool, everything defaulted as we wanted it to, and it created the drive within like a minute or two. We didn't have to like off the top of our head know any crazy programs to get it done. And yeah, there's not much to say there. It was really easy to set up and I kind of liked it. And that's all compared to FreeNAS, which takes a bit more knowledge and understanding of the ZFS file system to get it correct. Which, to be honest, I've set up FreeNAS two or three times in my life, and every single time, like I kind of like learn new things of like how to set like the block sizes and stuff right. 
to get the best performance out of each share. And it honestly, I still don't have it quite down right. So it takes some getting used to. And also, on the other hand, you have like plain old Linux and Windows uh, file shares that you can use. And they're very flexible for doing so, but they don't really provide a nice guided experience like Unraid. Now, one big feature of Unraid is the ability to simply add one drive at a time to your storage pool to expand it. Instead of needing to add big bricks of hard drives at a time, which you would need to do in a typical RAID or ZFS setup. Having this feature is really nice. And that if you happen to come across a spare two terabyte drive, or you can buy one because it's on sale, you can just chuck it in, change a few settings on your array, and let Unraid figure out some things, and you'll have just two more terabytes to use. This really is a great selling point for a lot of people who don't want to blow $800 or more just to add five more six terabyte drives to expand their storage, like myself. And another neat feature, although it's available in other ways on other platforms, is the ability to add a small SSD write cache to your array. This isn't perfect as Unraid only flushes the cache to the main array every so often and can even cause some problems with the network shares only showing the cache size as the max capacity of the array. But this may not be a problem for you, whereas if you only write to it once in a while, and even if you do write only like 50 gigs, then you only really need to have like a 100 gig cache drive just to make sure you have enough storage to write to the share at once. However, just like with anything in life, nothing is perfect, and there certainly are some downsides to Unraid that may not seem apparent at first glance. The first and most obvious downside is that Unraid does have a cost to it, whereas a lot of the open source ones don't. On their site, they list a few different licensed versions, with the only differences between them being how many drives you can connect. Basic for $59 gives you up to 6 drives, plus for $89 gets you up to 12 drives, and then the Pro license for $129 allows you to have unlimited drives. In my opinion, paying for Unraid here does not really seem like a bad idea, since you're paying for a solid product and its ongoing development. Plus, you also have a finger to point to to ask questions and really blame someone if something happens. Plus, another potentially meh thing with Unraid is that it doesn't use a traditional RAID, hence Unraid. And instead, simply speaking, Unraid pulls the drives together as one large drive and writes data to it in what's called a waterfall method, meaning it fills up one drive at a time, while also calculating parity bits if you have parity drives configured. This may not sound bad at first, and actually it's why it's really easy to add more drives to the array but this can cause some performance concerns as you don't get the combined performance of your drives that you would normally get in a standard RAID array where Stripe's writes across all of your drives. This may not be an issue for you if you're just loading on some media files and whatever else and don't really need a super fast NAS, but it can cause issues if you're using your NAS for virtual machine storage and when all your VMs try writing to their storage at once, they'll get bottlenecked by the speed of one, maybe two drives. And yes, I have run into this before personally, and it was kind of a hard problem to figure out exactly what was causing the slow write speeds. Some other really small gripes I have with Unraid are more preferences of mine that I'd like to see it to make it a bit more of a product for a professional environment. First is that the permission system really isn't clear at times if you're not already familiar with it, which threw my brother and I for a loop when we were trying to figure it out at first. And the only user that's able to log into the web UI is the admin user or root user which to me seems a little insecure if you want to let multiple people manage their shares and or the array. And getting back to that booting off of a flash drive thing, I'd much prefer to boot off of an SSD instead, since SSDs are almost universally a lot more resilient than a typical flash drive. And I don't know, just booting off of a uh, drive that's externally connected to your system just doesn't seem very clean to me. That all being said, just like with anything with computers, there will always be pros and cons that fit different use cases better. I, for one, can see this being very useful in the context of like a, just a home NAS where you're just storing some media files or very useful for like archival storage if you're making YouTube videos and want to store everything but don't necessarily need like the highest performance storage. As for me personally, while I don't currently use Unraid on my NAS and instead have been using FreeNAS for the last six years or so, I'm actually thinking about switching to it when I next upgrade my NAS since this seems like a bit better, more flexible solution for my home. I love FreeNAS to death, don't get me wrong. It's really great if you need something a bit more professional and more performant. I just kind of like changing things up from time to time and kind of want to see see what's available on Unraid. Anyways, that's all I have for today. And I'm curious to hear what you all think about Unraid and if you'd use it or not. So be sure to head down to the comments section and rattle off your thoughts. 
Also like the video if you liked it and subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. Go chat with me on my Discord server and I will catch you in the next one.